welcome to the Coach Kyle Show. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Kayo Show. Um, Kayo Day here. I want to quickly remind you, uh, before I even move forward, that greater is he that is in us um, than he that is in the world. Um, remember this show, this podcast, that is live on Facebook uh, right now. Uh, you can also listen um, to this uh, podcast on Spotify and pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. But this show, we uh, talk all things soccer. And for whatever reason, I think, I believe, we spend um, a lot more time addressing things that can but have some amount of impact on our lives generally through uh, the very game. So, you know, I always say soccer is not limited uh, to the field. It's, it's, a, it's a tool that um, can be used to learn uh, many life lessons, um, different things that can truly uh, have an impact on on your life so we try to while it's a program of all things soccer the more uh, the most important objective here is to inspire our young people and if you are part of any 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 um, organization that deals with young people deals with um, trauma, you deal with different things that young people are suffering with, you understand how how important it is to have more positive influence within society. And every everything that can can have an, a positive impact on the lives of young people should be taken very serious. That if you are around young people who deal, who are now dealing with different things that they don't have answers for, it's a real struggle. Now, if you are not in contact with those people or if you don't really care, because whatever you are doing, it's more aligned with something else, then it's okay. Uh, but those who are who are totally invested in um, the development, the holistic development of um, of an individual, youth, um, the youths especially, or in particular, you you understand the nature of the beast. Um, so we try to make sure on this show, good to see you, Sonia, that we're inspiring our young people to live out their purpose and, and through, uh, through the game of soccer and, and what this show represents, we, um, we are much more, we are much more grateful uh, for a young person living out their purpose and aligning themselves with what with what they were born to do so their their life can have some substance you know in these very uncertain times you there's so much pressure to live up to expectations there is social media pressure uh, there is peer pressure there is um pressure to look a certain way, to sing a certain way, to dress a certain way. Um, you need to, you need to know who you are. And like they say, stay in your lane. 
stay in your lane. You can be all things to all people. So we try our utmost best. Um, and this podcast is no different. But before I talk about what we want to discuss tonight and give you a chance to share this podcast, and it's more important for me that you share um, than you like, to be honest, um, because sharing is allowing whatever is in this message or in this podcast that can help someone somewhere, somehow, um, that justifies why I'm on this show. So I would love it if you take this time to just share. Um, if they're not able to see it on Facebook, they can definitely go to YouTube um, and, and, and encourage to subscribe and so that they can know when the show is on and be a part of it and participate. Um, it's an uncommon show, obviously, and it's not a show of entertainment necessarily. It's unscripted, but more importantly, for me, it's authentic because I speak uh, about soccer, which what this is what I do. This is what I study. This is what I spend time with. This is what I read. This is this is what I listen to on a daily basis. So. If you don't do all of that, then you might be, you know, offended or you might not, you know, stick around because more, more now than ever, people want things instant. You know, back in the day, our, you know, we had a coach, um, James McLean, coach Jimmy, as most people would know him, like, we had to be so disciplined in terms of our listening ability. Like we, we couldn't flinch when, whenever he was making, um, he was doing his duties when he was trying to um, motivate us, encourage us, demand from us, make sure that we were disciplined. You know, you had to sit straight and you had to listen and you couldn't move and, and most people will say, well, this is a different thing, but the different time, what is it producing? You 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 can't you can't get no one to sit down and actually listen to something um, because they, they really don't want the process. They want the quick fix. They want to hear something now, and it must fix everything now. They must, it must fix the, the problem now. So, you know, they have itching ears. They're looking for something that is instant, something that is quick, something that will make them move from the position they're in to where they want to be, which you could see why we have such a dysfunctional society. So hopefully you do share uh, we'll talk about free play um, because free play is it's a it's a big um, it's a big thing now in soccer. Everybody, oh, free play is important. You know the players just have to play, 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 and play, play, play. Um, it's not the art of development, and I say that um, with no with no apologies from my perspective. Free play. Um, it's not the art of development in soccer. It's not the art of development in football. When, we, when it, we're talking about the Caribbean and South America and Europe, who who still use the name football? Obviously, in America, it's soccer. I'm not saying it don't have a it don't have a place in soccer. Excuse me. I'm saying it's not the art. Of development, and if you if coaching is what you're gifted to do, if soccer is not something that you like, but it's your purpose, it's something that you 
you live with every day. You get up and that's the first thing you do, you think about. And the ending of the day, that's the last thing that you think about and the last thing that you're doing. Um, you will understand the difference between what you can do and what is the art of something. Uh, it's like being a commander and you not being a commander for you. A war is I've got to take out the enemy. But a commander will understand or whoever is, is high up, responsible for the soldiers will know that there's an art to this war. All right? Good to see you, Glenn Roy. You know, there's an art to the war. You just can't go and fight the war and say you got the best guns and you got, you, you have to, you have to have a plan. You have to, you have to know what gives you the best chance to succeed. Free play is not the art of development. So this free play notion, um, oh, let's just let them play, is not the art of development. Hopefully the, um, the objective in, in this podcast is to make sure that you understand learning happens when you are strategic uh, with your plans and understanding the coaching process. So true development comes from a clear, um, a strategic plan um, for learning. And leaders and people who are responsible for the athletes, regardless of what age or what stage they're at, um, understanding the coaching process. You have to differentiate between a coach and coaching. Coach, person, coaching, process. Those two things are not the same. And we also, we call everyone coach now because they stand at the side and they, they are the one giving the instructions. They are the one making changes and we call them coach. We've, we've watered down the thing um, and we have um, take away, we've taken away uh, the, the, the meritocracy from the very nature of what a coach is. We've given that title to every single thing that, that starts something or every single thing that stands on the side and make noise and, and run and run sessions. But there's a difference between um, the person and the process. So hopefully, you know, it's my, this is the objective that we figure out that this free play thing is a bad investment. Um, and why a lot of times people use it as their model uh, for or they use it as their methodology for for their training but we'll jump into it hopefully you begin to share you you invite you know your friends invite you know you might have that soccer mom who looking to get her child into a program and she's um, she's worried about numbers because she wants to see 20 people because numbers they say numbers don't lie but Something about soccer and numbers here is it's a big lie, uh, but it's the catch. Um, I think it 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 needs to be uh, a bit more deeper understanding of of what it means when you put your child under the leadership of um, of human beings because it has repercussions uh, and and. If that is not important to you in terms of the decisions you make, or you just happy to get your child doing something socially or or having some amount of recreation so that they don't get into other trouble, well, they're getting into bigger trouble. Because the mere fact that you're putting them in stuff and not really paying attention, you, things are happening and you're not aware, which is much more dangerous. Because if you if they're doing crazy stuff and you know you're probably aware, and you're gonna try to make different steps to um, to help them to overcome that thing, 
But when you lack knowledge and you just put your child in thing and you feel like, oh, there's a thousand kids there, so something good must be happening. If a thousand things bad is bad is happening, well, you will have a dysfunctional child soon because you don't know what is happening until it happens. And then you can't change it. So after this quick interruption, we'll, we'll jump a bit deeper into this uh, this free play methodology that is um, is growing very quickly, not just in soccer, but also in football in certain um, parts of the world. We'll be right back. Coyote, McKinnon and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon and company. We care. Okay, welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. Kayo Day here with your live podcast this great Monday. Hi, Marsha. Good to see you. Um, the 23rd of January. Um, we're talking about free play is not the art of development. <clears throat> and I know um, it will obviously step on... Um, on some toes, but this is the world we this is the world we live in. And it's a world where you need to be challenged. You need to if if you have a desire to grow and if you truly have the young people talking to coaches now, if you if you truly desire to see the young people within um under your under your guidance really progress. You need to be challenged. All of us need to be challenged based on our perspective, based on what we believe to be true, because it must be tested. It must be tried and it must be proven because our focus is to make sure that the people that we have around us, they are progressing. That is the purpose of coaching. That is the purpose of leadership, you know. It's to make sure that people are moving from where they are to where they need to be. So if there's not a presence of challenge in this, and and how will you grow? So I really I took a, a close look at this this whole thing because um, I've been hearing it a lot lately, and I'm not sure why it's so prevalent now within the game. Um. And why it's so big in the culture of the game, this free play, free play, let the kids play, let them play. Um, and oftentimes say, if I if I was to put my grandmother on the field every day to play, every single day, if I, nah, my grandmother might be far-fetched. Let's say I put a friend out to play who plays tennis and who is more of a baseball player, or maybe a basketball player, if I... If I play every day with them on the field, every single day they play with me, um, it's free play. I've, that, that I've never proven that that player becomes a player that is equipped to play the game with the skill that is necessary. So I don't know. I know where it came from, and I know how it's being misused. Um, but like I said... The instant gratification and this um, this desire to get what you need, 
has really pushed um is really pushing it over the edge because there's nothing um, to substantiate or there's no evidence to prove that this free play, just go and play. And I'll, I'll explain what how people define free play in, in, in a minute. But there's nothing to show that this is not even substantiated evidence yet to prove how people actually learn in the game of soccer. There's still people are still working and reworking things um, to find a clear uh, a, a clear part or a clear way in how people learn in soccer because we are so unique and and we are some are blessed with the gift and the talent um, that is very difficult to figure out how you learn the game of soccer. That in itself should tell you how free play became such a big thing. When, when even with a structured play or in an organized play, <laughs> there's nothing to really prove that you will go on and be equipped with all the tools necessary to play at the highest level because the evidence would have shown that not everybody who wants to play at the high level are actually playing at the high level. And some players, like if you go down to Brazil, some of the players who are better than some of the players that you adore and, and, and praise so much, they have you have never seen them play. There's so many factors. Um, so when they talk about this free play, what you hear a lot is, um, just let the players play the game. You got to get them going. Just get them going right away. Don't, don't, don't waste time with um, laying out objectives and rules and goals. and Don't, don't waste time with all that. Just get them going. You know, the kids' attention, but there's a reason why the kids' attention span is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. This is why they're so dysfunctional, because no one wants to equip or to help the young people to understand that things, take, is, you, for you to be good at something, it takes a process. I know times have changed, and, you know, it's a different, it's a different generation and in a different um, culture. But we're supposed to get better things. We're not supposed to regress with the changes that are coming. That's that's just my perspective. I believe if things are going to change, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be growth. It shouldn't cause regression. I don't know. So you might disagree with me, from, but from my perspective, um, this is a dysfunctional generation. <laughs> if you if you see some of the things that they do, and you see some of the things that they indulge in, without no without no fear or no reverence for nothing, <laughs> you and I won't do that. A decade ago, there's something that you, there's something that was happening that made you feel like, okay, maybe I need to hide and do this. This not need. This don't need to be. The things that you see and the things that are happening is creating a high level of dysfunction. So this notion of all right, let the players play the game, get them going. And the, the big one, they will figure it out. Oh, the more they play, this is a huge one. I don't know if some of you hear that from your coaches. I don't know if um, when you're having your, your coaches meeting or when you, you sit with your coach and he does his end-of-year evaluation where it's a whole lot of words and nothing to back it up, um, they will figure it out over... Oh, as they play more... As they play more, they will figure it out on their own. These are some of the most ridiculous statements um, I've heard in soccer. 
they will figure it out on their own. <laughs> Especially for young players. They will figure it out on their own. I think you have looked at Europe and you have looked at South America. And in some ways, the Caribbean, where the philosophy of getting up and going and play cultural or what is the culture there that um, creates this, that, that has this level of create creativity because maybe it's an innate thing. Maybe we're just gifted to, to do what we do. But at some point in time, those players, if not moved to an academy with more structure and more, um, more systems that are in place to enhance their development from just how uh, to, to the actual skill and understanding the game and the principles of the game, they will not progress. And I could safely say you see that a lot in the Caribbean because in the Caribbean there's not necessarily a clear path into the so-called bigger academies with all the, the, with, with the infrastructure and the, the technology and the, 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 the high level of coaching across the board uh, to move the players into that from, the, from their mere talent. A lot of times players they fall to the wayside in the Caribbean. Because if the likes of Dwight York could come out to the Caribbean, the Latapies, the you, you could go to Jamaica and, and you could call so many other players, Isla Watson from Guyana, that did so many things. You see um, John Barnes, these players come from the Caribbean background, but were able to get into... At an early age, they were able to move from just their natural ability, their free play, as you would say. They were able to move into a more structured environment that enhanced their skill. You hear players in America also say, oh, when I went to Europe, that's when I learned the game. But there's a lot of free play in South America. There's a lot of the kids just go play on the streets. They go and and they're, they're talented and they're gifted. And maybe that's just the culture. But they don't, that is not, that is not the reason why they're great. Or why they are playing at a high level. They had to move from that into a more into a more um, structured environment but now free play <laughs> is a concept within the developmental model in 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 certain places in most places as soon as the kid <laughs> As soon as the kids show up on the field, it's free play. You know, psychologists would, um, they, they would oftentimes say a child between, I think, two, two, three um, years old, they are, un, they are unable to negotiate um, what is and what is not productive. Like... I know very well a child at two or three, they, 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 if they want to do something, they will do it. If they don't want to do something, they will not do it. If they want to go after something, if they want to go outside and you could drag them as you want, they will fight and cry and scream because they want it. They don't understand it's rain falling outside and you might just get a cold and you might get sick. They don't, they don't understand how to negotiate those things. So if they want to do something, they will do it. They will desire it 100%. It's just like 
It's just like a child is he fired, they, 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 it looked brilliant to them. They they get curious, they won't push their hands. They won't put their hands there until they get burned and then they realize like, shoot, oh, that was hot. But they don't have the ability to negotiate sometimes. Not sometimes, but in, in every aspect, they don't have the ability to negotiate like what is and what is not productive. So this freedom, this freedom that they have, it comes with where they're at. <laughs> they don't even acknowledge that what they're doing is selfish or what they're doing is bad. They don't, they don't know that. They just, this is what I want. And you could see sometimes people get frustrated, like you're supposed to act like this, but they don't know. Like, what are you talking about? This, <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing that is kind of regulating this this thing that I this thing that I feel. I want to go there. I will go there. I'm hoping. <laughs> um, and it seems like the more you tell them don't do it, the more they want to do it. They want to go after it. What what am why am I saying this? Because if you're a coach and you're a leader and you're dealing with young players, you have to be careful and you have to acknowledge that what you're doing, you could be establishing poor rules for development, poor systems for development when you're using free play. This is why there's a clear principle. There's a clear principle that God identify with and he says, train up the child in the way they should go. Uh, I, I, I spoke about this a couple moons ago, the word Chanak is kind of return um, the child back to its original, um, its original state because God is the one who creates all of us. It's, it's wherever, whatever you believe, wherever you stand. That's what I believe. Okay? Whatever you believe, you believe. That's what I believe. I believe God created all of us. And he created us with a purpose. And once he created us, the duty was to, of the parents, of the guardian, was to make sure they train us up to get back to the original purpose in which we were born to fulfill. So as a coach, as a leader, as a parent, you know, we must be very cautious with the freedom. And, and in soccer, coaches must be very careful with the, this, this, this new idea of free play. It sounds more like do as you, do as thou wilt. It sounds more like that. Um, you should do your own studies on what that statement uh, means. So this is a thing that we allow this, this free play and it establish a, a, a behavior um, and behavior encodes what, how do I act in, this in whatever situation would have um, would have developed that behavior that I'm portraying. So situation happened. This is my behavior that repre that defines this situation. Once I behave like that and I behave like that consistent, it be it begins to encode. This is what I do when this happens. So if if something happens and this is the behavior that that I that I'm that I normally use to deal with this situation that is encoded. So once that thing happens again, behavior happens right away. I I behave, I respond right away without no conscious thinking. Because it's encoded. Like free play. Um uh, So just like the child at two and three, which they don't have no they don't have the ability to negotiate, young, young players in soccer, 
they are not at the age, and you can't even say that for young kids because there's a lot of young adults and even some adults who, because they weren't trained correctly, they don't fully understand the principles of the game and how they implement those principles in various situations. But let's 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 for argument's sake, we're looking at young players. Um, they don't have the ability or they don't have the tools or they're not equipped with understanding um, the, the full nature of the game. They talk about the nature of the game. I didn't want to talk about it now, but it's relevant. Uh, the, the, the how, the where, the when, the who, the what, they, they, they're not fully equipped with how to utilize what they have in different situations and different moments. So by allowing them too much free play, they are working on their own ideas that, ne that don't necessarily have nothing to do with where they're trying to go. They're operating just like the two and three-year-old. They don't have nothing that is regulating what to do when. So you have them just playing with an emptiness. There's no... There's nothing... There's nothing... You cannot reinforce nothing because nothing is there. They're playing based on what they feel and what they see. Which most young players will do. But it's dangerous if you don't create the pictures and you don't create the situations where you it's like an indirect force to discover what is necessary. If it's just free play, without a clear objective that is appropriate. Yeah, because you could have objectives and all these things, but if it's inappropriate for the age or for the stage and, and where the players are, then free play has no bearing on the art of development. So you just don't get to say, well, we have an objective. The objective must be appropriate also. Because I know that's that's what will come with that. Um, so if you just allow them to play and we don't establish excuse me, appropriately rules and systems um, to enhance or to create new behaviors from where they are, then we are limiting. We are limiting the development and the growth of our young people. And this growth don't only speak to soccer because in all programs, they talk about core values. And core values, while it has a lot to do with soccer, it has also a lot to do with how you live your day-to-day -day life in terms of how you progress, how you become a better person. And oftentimes, a better person become a better athlete. Not always. But I think most people will like that more uh, than um, a good athlete, but a, but a terrible individual. So, these we have to create things that, uh, that aligns itself um, that can reinforce the, the expectations and standards that would truly maximize the development of the players, of the athletes. And outside of the sport, just your child. Because you see kids, whatever they were able to do at 10, they're doing at 15. <laughs> Whatever they, whatever they were able to do at 12, 
they're doing at 18. And, and and sometimes you you bring something to light and they're like they're like fish out of water. It's like a light, it's like a bulb turn on in their head. And because when they look back, they realize like this is why all of this stuff happened to me. This is why I have no confidence. This is why I suffer with insecurities. This is why um I struggle with my identity and all these things. Because something, some some light is turned on in their head and they realize that, wow, these behaviors have been consistent from a very long, from a very tender age. And no one said, um, no one would have aligned them with these new behaviors and, 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 and systems that will, will help them to develop um, in a way that they reach uh, their desired outcome. It's very sad. Um, so every, you know, you see kids love this. Okay, I just get to play. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to stand there and, and listen to nothing. I'm not saying, got the kids standing there and, and giving them a whole lecture and, and speech. Um, you know, it, obviously, you know, some people did definitely don't like monologues um, because they themselves, their attention span weak. Even parents, sometimes their attention span is like, ah. So who teaching who? Lessons to you, Devon, Coach Bob. So, so the, the players believe that Boy, with this free play, and it's so much fun, and it's so much enjoyment. Um, and I keep saying, what? How do we define fun? Because fun here is a child having the the freedom to do what they want. Freedom here is, and, and some people embracing those things. Like I want to go drink, I just walk out. He says, "I should go drink." It's freedom. The coach laughed with me and we we look at we we talk on Instagram and we we talk about Instagram at practice and and it's it's so it's so it's so flexible and it's so this is it's but the, the last time I checked that fun is the ability to achieve something that you set out to do. It's called learning. That's what fun is. The fun is I got better, so I there's a reward for my hard work, there's a reward for my commitment. There's a reward for my discipline. It there's now a desire for more. That is the adrenaline rush. That is um, that is the desire that comes with wanting to do more. When I am when I'm achieving something, when there's a reward for what I'm doing, that's what I believe was fun. I don't know anybody have any other ideas listening out there. Because fun here is truly freedom to do whatever you want. It fun is not defined by getting better. But how crazy it is, right? When the their definition of fun, when they are not doing well, they club hop. They jump to the next club down the road. And they say, Well, we winning nothing. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. I've I've seen it where coaches made make it very flexible, and you know they are the players' friend, they are the parents' friend. They they all it's a big family affair. They they have barbecues together. And they, they, they 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 you know they have healthy conversation. They're approachable. And then next year the kids gone because they look in. Um, they're looking for a better situation. So now, what we're faced with this this left this free play, just come and play. They will figure it out on their own at some point in time. They will discover it as they play. They will discover it. Discover what? 
<laughs> you can you can only discover something that is there. <laughs> if nothing is there, what are you digging for? You will dig for the rest of your life. The, the only reason why somebody will go digging for a treasure is because they they know or they have some they have something that says that there's treasure down here. So they they dig in because with the hope that they discover based on the fact that there's some if there's nothing there, nobody not digging to hope for nothing. Nobody not digging for oil if they don't if they don't have some information about there's oil there. Let's begin the process. So what the kids gonna discover if nothing is there? And while something is there, it has no true bearing on the development or it's inappropriate. It's a lot of that. So now, <laughs> with all this free play, <sighs> and this is how they do things, they're unable to function outside of that comfort. So now they this the delusional. They believe something is wrong with everybody else. Because now they're out of their comfort and there's a demand and there's an expectation that forces them to regress. Because one thing about free play, it like I said, it's not the art of development. It's not the art of learning. It's not. So when you go into an environment, this is why parents are just making, most parents are just making useless investment. And I say it's useless investment because they, a lot of times they just put their kids in programs just because they want them to do something social or to, and I just heard that today. Spend so much time, spend too much time praying like, and at the end of the day, well, I don't feel like praying home because I'm not getting to where I want to get to. Yes, you will hear that because all the things you were doing was never preparing you for what you had in your de delusional mind. Oh, I want to be at this high level, but you, you don't, <laughs> you in a situation where there's nobody holding you accountable. You are comfortable every day. You are comfortable with whatever you are. You Every day you are comfortable. I just like this environment. Why? Because, you know, we just get to, you know, there's no real pressure. There's no real challenge. This is what we, this is what we teach in. That we, people will get great without pressure. People will get great without challenges. I'm not talking about no appropriate. Everybody knows that you have to do things a certain way and, and you have to keep this, this, this. Nothing is never linear. You have to keep going and learning. You have to keep challenging, reflecting, doing it again. There's nothing that you could say, this is the set way. There's nothing. So it's important that you understand what is it you're trying to achieve and you have to do your own due diligence to make sure that whatever is happening, regardless if it's pushing you, um, uh, if, it, if it's pressure, if it's, it's making you uncomfortable, the thing is, is it bringing me, is this thing challenging me to become better or is this thing um, making me regress? And if comfort is your definition of it making me regress, then you, you, you're you not going anywhere. Because if comfort is the determining factor of if something is fruitful or not, you, you, are, you are already lost. Because comfort dismisses things. What you want is challenges that, that uh, things that makes you uncomfortable, but when you're able to reflect, and you give it some time, you realize you would have made a step forward. Because people who accept you where you are and don't challenge you to become what you can, 
You always have to be careful with those people. You have to ask yourself why they like you at the level you're at. Without demanding that you get better. Think about that for a second. As we go to our um, our learning corner uh, for a quick break. We'll be right back. When the ball is on this side of the field, I ask the tree to play halfway. Halfway meaning I'm ready to pressure this ball if it comes in, forcing the, the, the player into my help. Or if the ball travels here, I can make the adjustment to get outside. What I ask my 11 to do, it's come deeper and play in between the lines. And if this happened, ask my 10 to force the ball wide, making this, moving the six across, moving the nine in between the lines. Obviously the three is here. So I could bring my seven a bit deeper. I could bring my five as a coverage here and now bring my two a bit on the inside because the seven is here. So it, the, the two can be a bit on the outside, looking at the 11. Now I bring my defend, my goalkeeper a bit higher to make sure it's compact and the lines are connected. Now what this allow? This allow uh, the four to become a playmaker because now we are in good position and we literally outnumbering uh, the attacking option here, which sets us up for a 3v2 when we regain possession. So Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. Kayo Day here. We're talking about free play is not uh, the art of development. It's not the art. Free play is not the art of development you know I was I was in a in a place one day I'm not gonna name um, the group or the the Academy or whatever big Academy I had about 16 to 20 players and it was like more you 10 you 11 you 11 players um, I was watching a bit and did that a, little, a bit of quick I want to say it's a warm-up they just yeah you just got to get them going. Um, they were playing 8v8 or 10v10, and they were playing in this small area um, with four goals, free play. They were just playing. Um, and I believe the coach thinks that by playing this variant, the players... Um, will improve the concept of uh, their visual recognition and their awareness that will enhance, obviously, uh, their decision-making. Maybe he's thinking, well, the spring season is coming, so, boy, we have to, we have to be able to play in tight situation. And, and, <laughs> and I, you know, I watched them play it for, like, over... 20, 25, 30 minutes. Big academy, you know. The ball never stayed on the field. That means after the first pass, the next one was it off the field. It was off the field. It was off the field. And I keep I watch and I watch and I watch. And and they just kept playing. And the coach would be, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
And he would say, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball. He was yelling, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball. At this age, at that age, it's not a clear understanding of the principles. And there's not, there's no rule setting in and no system that is encoded in them to have the level of autonomy to make effective decisions. So why place them in a free play situation with that level of cognitive demands? <laughs> what is... This is this is what I'm talking about free play. One, it's a, it's definitely is inappropriate, and and if you truly understand the culture, that variant is dangerous. It leads, um, it leads to nothing because all that force. All that is forcing the kids is to revert to bad habits. Why? Because learning needs a reward. You need to be rewarded for what you're doing. You need to see some level of success. Now, failure is a part of learning too because strategically you need to challenge the player where there's some of failure, some amount of failure that they want to keep going. Once again, it, it must be based on a strategic plan. And you must know why you're doing what you're doing and how you can how you can go back and then move forward and, and put different things in place. We don't have time for all of that. But I'm saying there is no reward. So what the kids started doing, they just start kicking the ball. They just start kicking the ball. They started trying to dribble in, in situations where there's no space. They were trying to protect the ball with no space and there's five players and what are they going to do? This, this coach obviously went on YouTube, didn't do no reading, didn't do no studying, then it's big academy too. <laughs> you might say, well, the agent, boy, that could be for everybody who don't understand the principles of the game, who are not equipped with the tools, who are not equipped or don't have the, the deep knowledge of the game where they could call back things and, and, and effectively and efficiently Utilize those things on the field. It's obvious. So we... <laughs> you damage all of those kids. One, psychologically... Because now they don't have no belief because there's no reward. It's the, it's the reward that keeps driving us. Is the demand of the thing that we want that we cannot get that we are pursuing with some amount of progression, with some amount of reward that keeps us going. And if not keeps us going, is what done or what encode the information that uh, that forces the autonomy on the field. We talk about um, conscious competence. We don't actually have to consciously think about the thing, but because the situation, because you've, you, you, you are constantly in that situation that form this behavior, when you see, when you see the situation again, the, you, there's a behavioral response to it. That's the autonomy. So I looked at this thing and I'm like, tactically, what are you trying to do? Physically, what is it you're trying to gain for long term, for to enhance the long term working memory of the young players that 
you are in an elite academy and doing this. Not understanding free play in, in Europe and in South America and in some and what you've seen, you don't stop picking up the people's stuff on YouTube. Understand what what they're doing. You are only seeing the result of something. You didn't see the plan. You didn't see the system that they put in place. Just because somebody says the more you the, the, the more you do free play, the, the better the kids will learn and they will be able to discover. They did tell you the plan that they use that they constantly reflect on the systems they have in place to measure what is happening with these kids from a from a from a cognitive perspective to know where they what they need to change and how they need to to structure their practice and what is it they're trying to what is it they're trying to to get out of it what do you know all of those things you just you just hear something on, on youtube or you just see something in a book and you just jump and you're gone and do it it seems like that because there's no way you could have a group of youth 11, U 10s, and you playing 8 v 8 on a small field where they have no place to play. And you saying they will develop the skill of decision making when every single, everything that they're doing is pushing them back to bad behaviors. You did this for 30 minutes. And then they go play two small goal. <laughs> and that was the session. So what are these kids able to call back at the ending of this? Because that's what practice is about. Is to is to is to create the different situations. And over a period of time, with the, 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 the different cycles that you're training, the players are able to encode things and then Maybe you move away, you come back, and they're able to call back. You're able to, to recognize, are they learning? Is it encoded? Or, or they just forget everything? Because learning is such... <laughs> learning is a very difficult thing. <laughs> learning is very difficult. Kids will leave. Kids don't even have to leave the practice, and they forget everything they've done. So think about they're not doing nothing and they're left and it's left up to them with these free play to discover. They don't they don't know what they're discovering. And then they the they, they practice end. Good job, boys. Good job. You did you did fantastic. You did so awesome. I love it today. I love that you were dribbling today. No, why, why, why did you dribble? What did you learn but dribble into it? None of that. Good job, boys. And the parents smiling from, from left to right because the son, the daughter just get a praise from the coach. You did fantastic. You know, the big word, fantastic. Well done. Good job. Articulate themselves so well. You get in the car and you said, what did you learn about dribbling? I get past the player and score. Free play. We are unable to separate performance from learning. Someone having the ability to do something immediately based on instructions. It's a performance approach. They're able to do it because you instruct them to do it. The learning is when they can do it when the situation, when the situation comes and they have the ability to call back. Free play, don't afford that when there is not a system or a plan in place or the players would, would not have done something long enough over a period of time and you're trying to see if they could call it back. 
Oh, they said, well, you know that we didn't, no, you didn't do nothing. John Maxwell said in the 15 invaluable laws of growth, he says, um, he said one very important thing. He said, growth don't just happen. Growth don't just happen. That means development and growth must be intentional. It must be intentional. I think it's a lazy excuse uh, for not studying and, and, and the inability to plan that is driving this madness because I got three teams and I'm tired. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do the same thing that everybody did, which is make it easy. While every child is different. You say, well, oh, it's just soccer. No, you do it. You, it has psychological implications that could take away a child's identity, that could make them insecure, that could make them seek out comfort, from things and places and people that is dangerous because you play the enrollment game. It's a lazy approach because the kids are having fun. But the same kids want to be good. And they, they're not in the position to negotiate what is necessary to be good until they get to the point where they know they're not good and then they got psychological issues. They become dysfunctional because they believe what you said. And you very well know you was just winging it with this free play. You did no studies. You did, you did no planning. You see them on the field, they don't even have a plan in their hands. Oh, I, 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 you know, I, I did the session a million times. I've done it before. Like they don't have the ability to forget. The players have the ability to forget. Everybody else can forget. But the coach, no, he no, he's he's genius. He he don't have the ability to forget. So he could show up and he can remember everything, every detail about the session about what he wants to achieve, the objective of the session. What is he going to ask in the session? Who is he talking to? What is the session about? What is he looking for? I guess he's looking for mistakes from free play. Driving this madness. Because enrollment is the focus, not soccer development. It's creating this perception I know I've got to be careful when I say perception because coaches, some coaches' concepts or or one or some coaches' concept now is perception. So now you I, I've got to be careful. Do they understand what what type of perception they're talking about? I wonder what perception means to them when they talk about perception. In regards to development, because there's a lot of perception. They're having fun out there. They're running around and kicking the ball. It, it is that. Listen, nothing is wrong with running around and kick a ball. But do you ever see the parents on Sundays and Saturdays at the game? It's no longer about running around and kicking the ball and having fun. It's about winning. Still, they had to put. <laughs> They had to change the rules for the referees. They had to bring more stringent rules that govern the youth game, youth nines and youth seven games. That's that. They had to change the rules to protect the referees, imagine. And then coaches have to be yelling and screaming and and people might say, well, oh, you're yelling and screaming, but some of these coaches are so insecure and some of them trying to, to keep their jobs. Obviously, obviously. 
They're trying to keep their jobs. So they have to scream things and they have to yell things out and they have to they have to, to make the they have to say to the kids because it's a psychological safety net for them to let the parents and everybody know that I taught it. I, I yesterday we did this. Boy, what are you doing? We only did this yesterday. Because they understand the parents are on the side saying, boy, well, what's shepherd is these kids play? This coach, he no good. Now they come together with a clique and they go on to the director. They said, we think we need a new coach. You know, we're going to have to move. And then you just get a call that, you know, we want to put you at the youth nine team or the youth 10 team. We think you're going to, we think you're going to do better with that group. That's a really good group. No, the parents went to them and say, hey, get rid of this coach. boy, Or we will go down the road at the next club. Because the group of parents, you know, you always got the two parents who the group is talked to. So the they will go say, they will go speak. They're brave. They will go tell the director because the director is different too. The director is different. So it's a whole world. It's a whole world of dysfunctional people operating for the development of the most important people, the youth. The kids, the the, the 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 ones who can't, who don't have a clue, who totally dependent on these adults to to help them to achieve their goals, to excel, to look back at themselves and say, I can be better than whatever I'm going through. This is some of the things we psychologically we 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 gather from these situations. It's not just the soccer. Is the ability to know that you can overcome. Is the ability to know that you can achieve something if you ha work hard, if you dedicate yourself, if you if you understand the process, if you are able to get through the dark times, if you're able to overcome the 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 the, uh, the struggles of life. Life is a roller coaster. It will go up. It will go down. But this free play thing, without consideration, without consideration of the child's development, is destroying not only the game, but is destroying any um, any goals and dreams that a young player might have. I'm not gonna go to the parents. Don't care about the, the dreams and things. They like, just, uh, they just, you know, yeah. There's so much money to do this, so money to do that. Uh, just let them just play and have fun. So we we're not gonna put we're not gonna put no we're not gonna put a whole stock behind this thing because and and in excuse me, and in some cases they are right. <laughs> they are right because nothing ain't going nowhere. I can't listen. There's one time I, I can't blame the parents for for having that mentality because what look around, what is what is going where? It's a recycle. You go down the road, it's the same thing. You go up the road, it's the same thing. You listen to you talk to certain parents who who know what's going on. They're in a bind. It's like they <laughs> They're in they hard on the hard earned income is on the line. You can't blame them. It's like any other thing. If you've had bad experiences and bad experiences and bad experiences and bad experiences, obviously you, you're gonna have some amount of you have some amount of retreat to even the things that are true. You can't blame, you can't blame. No one. This is a system. It's a system that creates this. If if the system was pure, it was based on meritocracy, and it was just like any other job, you have to be qualified and you have to prove that you have the skill to do what you're doing. Soccer, you don't have to have nothing. You could just know somebody and you snap on the side of the field. 
and you're a coach. You're a nice guy. He's going to coach the team. Oh, he play high school. He can coach the team. Oh, he play college. He's going to coach the team. But to be a doctor, you just can't say, I like I like working in the hospital. So I'm, I'm a doctor. You just can't, oh, I went to medical school, but I, I, I drop out. But I'm a doctor. You, you can't say that for nothing else. You can't say, well, I, I go to the mechanic shop every day. So I'm a mechanic. I go there every day. I just give the I just give, I normally give the, the, the mechanic a pliers. I give him a screwdriver. I even hold a light for him. I hold a light. I'll be there every day. I'm a mechanic. Come, let me fix your car. Come. You a mechanic? Let me see what... No, but <laughs> a soccer coach? Anybody. Anybody could be there. You... Nothing. We, oh, I know you. You're a cool guy. Come, be an assistant coach. You... Because I know you. You're really nice. You're not you're not gonna you're not gonna under my listen, I understand. I understand you got to be careful who you want to be assistant because they're so treacherous. <laughs> they're so treacherous. Some of them got mustache spirit. Go and look it up. You see. You have to be careful with them. Some of them like leeches too. Some of them have no loyalty. They will come with a book and they write everything down, and then suddenly they become coach. They they know concepts and philosophies and they could talk about ages and stages and all manner of thing. Because it's they did. It, <laughs> so I understand all of that. But it's a system that creates this. And somebody have to change the system. Because I, I'm standing on it, it's destroying any hope for the young people to get back to understanding that not everything that not everything that is instant is good and just go and play and and be free and and saying that you will learn without an uh, an an understanding of the principles that guide this game and the, the strategies and the specificity of the game and, and all these variables, there's nothing to discover. This is why we have so much dysfunction in the game. So I'll break this thing down so I get out of here. Because I started off by saying that it's not that you can't use free play, but how it's it's used and free play now is we play we play more games. This is something in the Caribbean you see you now. Let's play more tournaments. Let's play more games. Let's play, 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 play. Don't understand that playing is about implementation. That's why you train five days and you play one day. Because when you play, it's a hundred percent. So if you plan, if you plan and plan and plan, which is for implementation, when will you get the chance to learn? So if you're only implementing and you ain't learning, what are you implementing? Not the same thing you implement the last week and it can get worse. So let's play more football. Let's play more. Let's play more soccer. Yes. And there's something to be said about that. Let's 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 play more. If we play at all, we might, yes, we might definitely want to play some more. But we can't we can't neglect the learning. It's the learning that establish and maximize the playing ability. So if we play more. That means we're given less time to learning. That might fly over your head. But it's the same thing with this free play. As soon as the kids come now, you put on two goals, go play. Go play. Go play. Free play can be used. It can be used, but it takes 
coaches with a high level of competence. And and one and 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 an organization that creates a learning design um, to change the behavior. So these things that you see in it is that it is designed. I had a chance to meet one time with a premier, a premier club. I'm not gonna name their names, but I had a chance to sit down with the academy coach and he was discussing or he was explaining to me what they do and he'd given me the deep the give he was giving me the deep insight of what happens behind the scene and that's why i said what you see on youtube <laughs> it's it's the result of something so how he was breaking it down to me i was like wow i'm not going to say what he said But it's obviously, it was a learning design. It, it was, it was. They created a system, and they had um, something in place to create rule setting with the mind of the players through this um, this training methodology. And they're not, they, was, they weren't just chain, training because some of you play free and then you go home because I don't see no video in your practice. So what are you reflecting on? You don't have the ability to remember nothing. You, coach, you don't. I am telling you, you don't. And if you don't have the, if the players don't have the ability to remember and you don't have the ability to remember, and you're just trying to remember the, the worst thing or the best thing that happened in the practice, you, you are doing a disservice to yourself and also a disservice to the players. Once again, free play didn't mean nothing. It hasn't moved the players forward. It pretty much regressed them some more. They're now in a deeper hole. You have to have clear learning design um, systems that will change the behavior of the athlete. And not just that, you, you can have to have measurables and you have to set benchmarks and you have to be able to go back and it's not just the concepts and, and the philosophies and the ideas and, and, and the methodologies and all the big goals you set. is learning design systems. You have to have a system because you pe people talk about, oh, this is my philosophy. This is my, what is the system you have in place? What is the system are you using? Is it conducive for the culture you're in, for the group that you're working with? for the parents that you're dealing with, for the training volume you have, what's the system you use it? I see a philosophy. <laughs> I see it. It's, it's brilliant. The words are, it's awesome. No, tell, talk, to, talk to us about the system that you have in place for it. Because a lot of players... Now this generation of players, they stick, they stuck on the how. They stuck on the how. And the ones who have mastered the how, the, the how, they have now mastered the ability to execute with no rules, with no systems. That means they cannot do things based on the opposition. They cannot read nothing. They're just masters of executions because that is what gets you in, in this system. You're talented and you have the physical attributes. You will play anywhere here. You will play. You will play. You see it on Instagram all the time. Look how we, look how we break the lines. Look how we bail out. Look how we this. Okay. But if somebody's watching, they will look at the opposition. 
No, it's the opposition testing your ability and your competence of what you've been learning. Or you just master the art of execution. Why? Because you're playing against somebody who don't have the ability to stop what you're doing. In a developmental model. We're not talking about the protein. So yeah, we see we see the kids dribbling, we see them doing all kind of things, we see them passing the ball. Five, six, seven, eight passes. No, show us the opposition. Show us what the opposition did. Because that is free play. That's the free play me methodology. The free play methodology when the systems and and the and the and the learning design program is not is not encouraging or enhancing uh, the skill aspect of the game like reading and understanding the game and making good decisions then you're stuck with the how and if you master the how you become masters of execution without no rules and system i hope that this podcast you know help you to go to your practice and see if the first thing is you just playing and what rules are you playing by and then ask your, your players at the end of the session, what did they learn? Ask them why they did what they did. When are they going to use it? Who are they connecting with and why? Ask them those tough questions and let's see if the free play system is a development, is the art of development. I want to thank you for enduring. <laughs> I want to thank you for enduring this this podcast. Hopefully, it was hopefully it was helpful in some ways, um, or the other. I think if you're a coach, and if you truly love this craft, you have to spend more time studying. You have to spend more time reading. You have to spend more time um, making trips and and desiring to do your own research. Come up with your own ideas, your own concepts, your own methodology your own um, philosophy, you know, that comes from studying and reading, not jumping on, on YouTube and looking for everything, every session, everything a top coach says, you, yes, you will repeat it. They're coaches. If you are coaching and they are coaches, the, the, the work that they're doing, you, sh you should be doing it too. Go and do more studies. You obviously don't have time for that. Because if you're doing that, I am telling you, you would have less time with the stuff you're doing on social media. You would have less time. You would have less time. Or if you're doing it, it, it would be very, you will see it. You will see the content. You will see what is coming behind it. Don't be tricked by the by by big words and, and statements and people having the ability to articulate. Let them show you the system that they're using for the things that they're saying. That's what I want to see. I want to see the system you have in place. I see your words. I see your concept. I see, I see your philosophy. I see your methodology. I see all of those things. I want to, I want to see a system. I want, tell us about your system. Because what you're saying and what I am seeing, they're not congruent at all. So, have a blessed one. Thank you for being with me again on the Coach Kaya Show. Please do share. Please do share. Please do share. It's much more important to share than to like. So if you, if you have a problem with liking, then you have the option of sharing. So you don't have to worry. It's, it's you know, it's either. So if you don't want to like, um, you have the option of sharing. I don't think nobody will know if you share. I'm not sure. I'm not so skillful on this social media thing. But you could hide and share because it might mean something to someone else. So stay blessed. Um, enjoy. Um, the rest of your week, be safe and put God first. He's still on. He's still on the throne. Excuse me. He's still graceful. He's still gracious. 
Um, it don't matter what you're going through. It don't matter what you've done. God is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. And I don't know why I'm saying it, but maybe somebody needs to be reminded. Don't worry, the people who quick to expose and expose. They, 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 if they're not exposing you to Jesus Christ, well, then we know who they who they work for. So if you're so great at doing that, you should be great at exposing one to greatness, one to fulfilling their life and fulfilling their purpose, regardless of where they are. So enjoy this week and know that God is still on the throne and he's still renewing and he's still changing and he's still building and he's still um, looking for those who will be a remnant. So keep going, keep pushing, stay strong. And let the peace of the Father reign in and through your life. Have a good night. Now is the time to keep your family warm with quality insulation for your home from Pro Insulation Company. At Pro Insulation, we solve all your residential and commercial insulation needs. Attics, crawl spaces, walls and ceilings, new and existing homes. And we offer traditional insulation and spray foam. Call Pro Insulation Company today for your free in-home estimate. For all your insulation needs. Leave it to the pros and call Pro Insulation Company in Plainfield today. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experience coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun, so why not name it Rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game. It's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.